Okay, so I was I will be talking about uh, something more low level compared to the application that you heard uh, here, and this will be about uh, how do we write SQL queries, of course, with Qt in 2013. Well. Uh, everybody knows probably how an SQL query looks like, even if you didn't use nowadays in your application, but you probably learn in the school and or in the university. And uh, well, this is an example how it looks. You, you can select the best talk from the Lightning Talks database. In Qt, we can do it, of course, because Qt has good support for SQL. That's what everyone is saying. We have a Qt SQL module that supports multiple database backends. So you can connect to any SQL server and just run your SQL query on end. But this cute SQL module is only a thin layer above the SQL statements itself. You just have an interface towards the server <coughs> and a very basic error handling then and some kind of uh, prepared statements for uh, saved queries and so on. But it's very, very limited. So all that you do is to send the pure SQL string to the server and get back some answer that you process it. It has some methods that helps parsing the result, but again, it's just a thin layer and it has lots of lots of problems. Maybe it's, I did not even list all of the problems that it has, but one of them is that it doesn't support creating of tables. So how do you create a table? You use your create table statement as a string or you create it somewhere else and we just use it from Qt application and doesn't do it from Qt. There is no error checking on the client side. All the error checking happens on the server. You execute a statement, all what you get back is, was it correctly executed or not? You don't know about the problems before you send it to the server and get back the result. If you use, if you target multiple databases, then you must use probably a lot of if devs or if MySQL do that, if Postgres do that, and so on. Because there is no abstraction above the pure strings that you, they are sending there. It's very error prone. Just change the name of the column in your table and your application will be broken. You compile again and still broken. You have to do a search and replace in your application to change the name. Otherwise, it will be just broken and you don't notice until you run it. And uh, there is no possibility to, to update easily your existing database. You roll out a new version, it introduces new columns and so on. It's very hard to update that database. And the root of all the problems is that it is string-based. String-based queries are sent around very hard to find errors there. Assuming that we have a table like that. So we have presenters in, in the table. And then we have a name, an age, and the company where they belong to. And then we run some query like select the name from the presenters where the age is I'm young. What? Yes, you can do that in Qt and it will compile. Am I young? Yeah, I, I tend to say that I'm, I'm young, but still, that's not a number while the age there is a number, it's an integer. And you will not notice that until you run your application. Hmm, what is that name? Yeah, it's very common to make typos when you type, especially fast. Still, you don't notice that. It's, it, it's very hard to find errors in this code. So let's try to find a solution for this one because this is not good. In 2013, we must have a better way to write SQL queries. Let's have a bright idea. Instead of writing the string, let's do query builders. Let's build our queries in C++. So let's cre create a query builder for the select queries, where I just set a table that I want to query. I add the name of the columns that I want to get back. And I create some work condition where I'm checking if one of the column is equals to something or the, or the other, and then exactly that one. Hmm. I think that we, we didn't really solve the problem. Why? Ah, I can still make typos there. Yeah. I can still write a string for com and compare with a number. Yeah. So we fixed some of the problems, but not the main problem. We fixed the complication of how do you construct a query. So part of the strings are removed, but part are still there. 
So try number two. Let's create the tables in C++. Let's define the tables in C++. And then maybe we can find out the type of the columns and the name of the columns using C++ functions. And then we can have compiler time error checking for that. So let's define something like a table. And this is a def valid definition, can be a valid definition in C++ where you define a table name. What is the string name of that table? Define columns, give the type of the columns, and you can give a C++ or Q type there. Define if it can be null or not, and so on. And then, yeah, there is some ugly boost type of line there. Just ignore now. Of course, there are some magic behind this one. And then when we update our query, the query builder, instead of using strings, we can use the C++ name, the presenters table. We can use the column from the presenters table. It will know that I'm young is a string while the presenters age is a number. So you will get compilation error, compiler time errors here. It will notice that you made a typo there. There is no such column for presenters. So that's a good way to write a queries. I hope that you agree with me. It's a much safer way, much easier to debug it. You will have much better program by using that. But wouldn't it be even nicer to write something like this? Do not write query builders, but instead write the select query in a C++ line. <coughs> like select the presenter's name from the presenters where the age is 42 and the name of the company is KDAP. Would it be nice to have it? Yes, I think it would be. And it is already possible to do it. And how is it possible? Well, we have a library, a, C, a Qt library called SQLate and comes from the SQL template. It's a template-based library that can do with some magic, boost magic, and C++11 magic in some places. That's what you see there. This library has already query builders for the common SQL commands like insert, update, create table, and so on. There is a schema and table definition in C++ with using some macros there. It supports complex join statements written in C++. It supports transactions. You can monitor tables for changes. So you can cha get a signal if a certain value changes in the table, and so on. And of course, it supports schema updates. So if you roll out a new database, you just change the version number of your schema, and it will update automatically for you. So that is everything that we have there. It can even hide the dialogue differences, because you can put the chain differences in the library instead of putting in the code. So your code will be pure C++, no SQL specific there, nothing, no strings. Everything is handled by the library. And can I use it? Can you use it? Well, I can use it because I, we, have, we wrote this for our project. <laughs> but luckily, you can use it too, because it's LGPR licensed, and it's already available in GitHub. You can check out. You can try it. Bit, a bit of warning that it's still work in progress, but you can see how it works now. It's already usable, but right now it's Postgres specific, and there are a lot of things that you would like to do but we didn't do yet. So that was all. And as you already know, vote, vote, vote. Thank you. <laughs>